supervisor uh, who is my supervisor has been working on electrochromic materials for a long time. One of the best professor doing research in this fight in the world. We have a big research group in China and uh, in Beihang University. Uh, we have been working on electrochromic devices for a long time. Uh, Mr. Kilkush has been working on energy for years. He is the author more than 50 500 papers in several journals and proceeding on a large variety of topics. Uh, he has uh, several patients pending on green buildings, heat pump, and low exergy systems. Uh, he received his PhD degree in mechanical uh, engineering with high honors from Middle East Technical University. Uh, as I know, uh, he visited to China in the past. Uh, he undertook important duties in many important organizations in Turkey. Uh, in this meeting, we have many Turkish and Chinese friends who have been doing master and PhD in China and Turkey. Some of our friends have been working on energy like us. Uh, now uh, I will, I'm finishing my speech, uh, I will let and speakers to speak uh, about their research direction. Uh, first of all, uh, we can start from uh, Birol Kılkış. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Kılkış? Yes, uh, I hear you. Uh, uh, so am I going to speak first? Yes, yes, please. Just a second, please then. Yes. Let me share my screen. Okay, you can share your screen. You, are you seeing my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Uh, good afternoon and good evening to China. <laughs> from Turkey and my best greetings to all our Chinese colleagues, students, researchers, and as well as Turkish students and researchers and professors. This is a very good opportunity to me to speak to all of you. And I thank you to Chinese Turkish Student Union and the uh, BRIC uh, journal. And uh, today I will start with a wider topic about the global warming, first of all, the fundamentals. And then I try to converge as time permits to specific uh, applications like nearly zero carbon greenhouse with the uh, solar shading, solar PVT systems, ground source heat pumps, everything, including chromatic uh, uh, glasses. So uh, I would like to introduce the uh, topic as the rational utilization of renewable energy. Well, all of us are familiar with what the renewable energy is so far, but how successful we are in rational use or utilization, actually the better word is utilization of the renewable energy. I will try to show them first after introducing you what the global warming problem is in fundamentals. And in this respect, I will continue with the energy or exergy, which one comes first question, especially on the road and belt initiative. I am from Austin Technical University right now, and also I am serving as a consultant to the polar technologies in Ankara Hacettepe Technopark. And uh, I am in involved in Brick Belt and World Initiative Quarterly Journal. I am sure all of you have access to this journal. It's a very important journal and I'd like you to uh, let people know about this journal and I invite you to write papers. Uh, and uh, Ms. Ebru Shahin is with us. So uh, please get in touch with Utku or Ebru about future papers. Anyway, so let's go ahead. The global emergency. Now about 65 countries have already declared 
emergency. This is important, not global warming, not climate change. They are in the past. Now we are indeed in an emergency situation. And I would like to give you some facts and in-depth realities. What's happening in the atmosphere, for example? Yes. Until today, the ozone depletion potential, ODP, and global warming potential, GWP, of refrigerants and other agents used in many applications were treated separately. But now I'll show that they are indeed directly related and they compound the so-called global warming. In fact, global warming taking place in the lower layers of atmosphere simultaneously reduced the heat transfer to the stratosphere acting as a blanket and therefore the troposphere gets cooler where the ozone doesn't like cold temperatures so ozone gets depleted. So global warming has a, a secondary effect on ozone depletion and vice versa because ozone depletes more sunshine uh, radius to the surface of the earth and global warming is compounded. So it's a closed cycle. And also the humidity increases from cooling towers, etc., which also contribute to this adverse mechanism because NASA has declared that the humidity release or water vapor to the atmosphere has twice as much harm as carbon dioxide in terms of global warming. So in this respect, the latest atmospheric findings clearly show that there is almost a perfect correlation. Now, what's that correlation? Let's see. Uh, year. The temperature change in the lower atmosphere is something like this, a sine curve. It's not constant. It's, uh, as you see in different years, it's increasing, but in a year, it is swinging. And the highest temperature is about June and July in the northern atmosphere, Turkey and China. And at the same time, the ozone layer is getting thicker, uh, sorry, thinner in the same periods of time, July, August, as you see. And this temperature is also getting colder while the earth is getting warmer. So this is a perfect symmetry in terms of months and also in terms of the temperature. And this, perfect match, almost perfect temperature match, a mirror image has a message to us. It says that ODP and GWP are really cross related. There are two symmetries on the temperature scale and on the time scale. And we were able to find out what the relationship, and it's interestingly for, uh, enough, the temperature change in stratosphere divided by the percent temperature change in troposphere is equal to pi. And furthermore, starting from this relationship, we have devised a new correlation called ozone depletion index, which combines the effects of global warming potential and the ozone depletion potential, as well as the uh, atmospheric residence time. Because for example, carbon dioxide may stay in the atmosphere for hundred years, but other refrigerants may stay less. Let me combine them and we also correlate that the refrigerant leakage and the refrigerant global warming potential times the charging amount of refrigerant per year because refrigerants in heat pumps, chillers, and other systems always leak. And therefore, they also, as you see, correlate to carbon dioxide. And higher the carbon dioxide, higher the global warming, we need higher cooling uh, demands. And it is projected that in 2050, the cooling loads in the Northern hemisphere, including China, Turkey, all other countries, and also especially on the Belt and the world, the cooling loads will surpass or exceed the heating loads. So we have to be careful about that. And this is a relationship. And uh, lately, the VRV or variable refrigerant flow systems are on the rise, but they leak too much. And especially uh, in uh, hotel rooms and others, they put uh, warning systems so that the people need to be evacuated because of the leakage might be 
severe. So there is a limit, it's a health effect. Anyway, the ozone hole, as you see, is the biggest when it's coldest after a time left, of course, because it's not an instant effect. But when the temperature rises again, it's closer. So it's a cyclic. And many newspapers, uh, to be on the optimistic side, take this last picture saying that, oh, the ozone hole has been closing. No, next year it will be open again. And this is a cyclic situation. That's what is happening in the atmosphere. It's a dense of global warming and dense of ozone layer. So we need to work more. And this is another explanation. The ozone on the surface is increasing because of the pollution, but normally it is up to the 15 kilometers altitude is almost constant. Then we have the ozone in the stratosphere case. But while the global warming increases due to carbon dioxide increase, the temperature increases in the troposphere, but decreases on the stratosphere, making the ozone layer thinner, as you see. And the exergy or the uh, temperature factor of the Carnot cycle in thermodynamics gets a shear. It's a shear front. And that's why we get, due to this temperature shear, the hurricanes everywhere, all over the world, which we never saw that. Two days ago, we had a mild tornado in Ankara. I haven't seen that in my 70 years of life. And because of this effect, this uh, severe weather conditions are getting closer to the earth, lower. So one day maybe our aircrafts uh, will be <laughs> uh, traveling in the stratosphere and we might get an astronaut <laughs> or near astronaut uh, pins because we will be closer to the uh, edge of the space. And as you see, despite many measures using the energy savings measures, we have observed in, from March 2020 to 2021, about three ppm increase. And this is the case. And there are, of course, ripples, ups and downs, the changes. But skeptics only look at these small ripples on the left, as you see, and they say, oh, there is no global warming. This is climate change. And as you see, it has almost about eight years of frequency. And they just let us to see these red curves. But what about the black one? because they are, the skeptics are deliberately nearsighted. They just want to view the small ripples, but the reality is carbon dioxide, whatever we do up to now is increasing. What's exergy? Well, exergy might be a little bit pushy term, but it is the potential of a given amount or flow of energy to be used or utilized in useful work outputs, like electricity. Once you generate electricity, you may use it almost in any application. It is 95% useful. But let's say you have uh, 35 degrees Celsius, low temperature waste heat. It is a heat, it's a potential, but what can you do with 35 degrees? Nothing much, you cannot generate electricity under normal conditions. So it means that the lower the temperature, the potential of useful work gets less. And this is the exergy or the quality of energy. Energy is quantity, like kilowatt hours, BTU hours, whatever. And also kilowatt per kilowatt, how much kilowatt I can transform it to useful, value adding uh, applications out of a kilowatt of power or whatever you have, electricity. So the exergy is, according to the cardinal cycle, which is very simple, depends upon the source temperature that I have been talking about, to, with respect to the reference, so it's a heat engine, and it's the quantity. 
This is the quality. And as you see, it is less than the quantity. As I will be showing, for example, for solar energy under normal conditions, I can only use 65% of the quantity of solar energy in useful work. And as Peter Novak said uh, about 10 years ago, we pay for the quantity of energy, like we pay for electricity in cloth house from our electric meter or a cubic meter of natural gas, but we can only use the exergy. So this is the case that I would like to emphasize. Well, what about wind energy or solar energy? They don't come with a temperature, but we may have a coolant, uh, carnal cycle equivalent temperatures, virtual temperatures. So let's see a boiler. A boiler uses natural gas, which has an exergy of 0.87, slightly less than electricity, but it's still a powerful, valuable fuel, but fossil fuel. But if I use it only for hot water, I just uh, destroy the opportunity of doing more useful work, what we call the, the exergy destruction, because I could use the same natural gas first in a combined heat and power system to generate some electricity and then use the waste heat. Because I don't do that, the rationality that I have been talking about at the beginning of utilizing whether fossil fuel or renewable energy, it's only 6%. The rest is destroyed. Well, what does it mean? I mean, destroyed, that's okay. But this means that instead of generating electricity first by myself using the same similar amount of natural gas, I just use hot water application. So someone somewhere sometime will try to offset my distractions by spending more fuel. So I have now an additional carbon dioxide responsibility, although it doesn't show up in my chimney, but it is stock. Let's see a solar photovoltaics or power generator. This time, well, I take the cream out of the exergy, I generate electricity or power. So my rationality jumps to point 40, but I am still destroying the rest. I could have after electricity waste heat. This brings me to the combined heat and power, which means I generate both power and heat. So my destruction as shown in this white area is getting smaller. So my rationality is steadily increasing to up to 70. And the idea is let's minimize the distractions of useful work potential. Let me use properly what I have in my mind, either fossil or natural uh, renewable systems. And as you see here, the carbon dioxide responsibility that I don't see on my chimney, it's, but as a responsibility in the energy stock in the society is a function of one minus psi. So high my rationality, less the carbon dioxide emissions responsibility of myself, in addition to direct emissions. This is the second part. And this gives me the initial hint that because always there will be some exergy destructions, I cannot use everything in the proper manner. There will be always losses. So the carbon dioxide can never be zero emission. I can be nearly zero. If I increase this R fraction up to 90, up to 95, it is possible, but beyond is impossible. So at least I have 5% carbon dioxide reduction, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide emission situation. So this is the relationship, more the psi R is less the responsibility. And this is a condensing boiler example. In numerical values, I will be able to sh share them later if you have any questions. In this case, as you see, it's as low as 3%. The rest is destroyed. And someone has to offset these by additional emissions, uh, fuels. So therefore, my question, is this the first or the second law? What's this? So this is the human index development index. This is uh, according to the new approach of China and we. Uh, altogether, 
respect to human, respect to animals, respect to the environment as a whole. And so this is in general, human indexed development index. In other words, while we are developing, our primary target is the welfare, health, and uh, prosperity of human beings, which takes along with this, all the creatures, all the environment. So we need to increase this, that's okay, but let's not uh, uh, forget that the exergy destruction is somewhere there. And this is defined by the second law, the Carnot cycle. Today, our rationality is about 0.35. We are here. So our index is quite lo low. And there's an unbalance. This is the reason why we have an uh, unbalance between the supply and the demand of uh, useful work potential of supply and demand. We have to balance this. So ideal for tomorrow, as I said, should be about 0 0.95. 0 0.1 is ideal mathematically, but impossible. And the world average is here. And that's what so far, this is the farthest point we can go with the first law of thermodynamics, the energy efficiency. We cannot exceed the energy efficiency above 100%. But the rationality, we can go from 0 0.35 up to 0 0.9. There is a large room of improvement. So the future relies on the second law. That's what I call energy transition. Now it is time for exergy transition. We have to balance the supply and demand in terms of quality. And as long as economy is related only to the quantity and price of energy, global warming and ozone depletion will never stop. That's my point. In order to balance this, I have to increase my exergy rationality, which decreases substantially the carbon dioxide. With the first law, I cannot go any further. Well, how we can decouple sustainable development and carbon dioxide? The carbon dioxide, if we stick to the original development index, which is indexed directly to money, whatever the money is, the economic development increases only and only if carbon dioxide is increasing. This is the business as usual. And that's why the carbon dioxide is still increasing because everyone wants economic development. Energy savings, okay, we go down, which is the topic of uh, the students. Using more renewables, fine, energy efficiency, but still we are uh, at a lower rate increasing. So the missing link is this, as I have shown, there is another link which nobody recognizes except few. Please recognize this, don't forget this part. Once we do something here, as you see, we cannot have the screen now. This is exergy rationality, and that's when only then decoupling may occur, which is all the world is looking for, decoupling between development and the carbon dioxide. That's the key. And that's the key, the fourth uh, element vectors, exergy rationality. So exergy comes first at this moment because energy has already been saturated. It has already been close to uh, ideal case, like a condensing boiling in terms of first law, it's 95% efficient. So what's left? What's left is here. And we have to change to HSDI. This is the first law, efficiency. Heat output, uh, work output, work input, potential or power. But the carbon dioxide, as I've shown, has one component in the denominator and one here. And mathematically speaking, E destruction, which is about 0.3 right now, is dominant this equation. So efficiency change is uh, slowly increasing, but the exergy destructions are, with respect to the application temperatures especially, are much more sensitive as you see. So we have to pay attention. Low enthalpy geothermal, as 
a low temperature geothermal energy, which is very widely known in Turkey and also in China. They say, well, let's use uh, very low temperature geothermal heat, but in terms of heating in the buildings, I need a heat pump. Well, the heat pump uses electricity. Electricity means carbon dioxide. Heat pump leaks refrigerant, so ODP combines with global warming potential. And let's say you just peak the temperature so that you may use this hot water in your radiators, for example. But as you see, the exergy is destroyed which means this will not work in terms of exergy. So lower is better, as I said, but the, 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 there is a catch for using low temperature, low exergy resources, waste heat, low uh, temperature solar energy because of this uh, peaking problem. So what we need in next, we have to de design low temperature heating systems or high temperature cooling systems. As I said, cooling is becoming also much, much more important in the future. So this is another area of uh, research. And of course, we have to still continue improving our energy performance, energy savings, reduce the energy loads, like uh, uh, windows with the chromatic uh, shades, et cetera. Uh, uh, this is going on, but they will not solve the problem as desired. And uh, just to re repeat, the ozone depletion index, the new one, has these numbers, which is open to discussion. And I would like to invite our Chinese uh, colleagues to stick on this uh, point also. For example, refrigerant R744, it's a carbon dioxide. ODP is zero, global warming is one, it's the baseline, but it stays 120 years in the atmosphere. So it is still has a ozone depletion index, is a combination. What about F gas, which is touted as the best gas? Yes, it has ODP zero, but look at the GWP, 3,500. Its residence time is less or even, even less, but as you see, it's higher than the carbon dioxide, but it's not zero. So we will never reach zero carbon situation. Nowhere, no time. That's the result. Take an example now. We are going uh, to the, uh, uh, the uh, result. Let's say a wind turbine. Wind energy is free of carbon dioxide, it's free. I generate electricity with the batch law about 50% maximum. But let's say because of the future electrification of uh, cooling systems, I need to use a heat pump using that electricity, which is up to this point is zero carbon dioxide. But because it is leaking refrigerant, because it is destroying some energy, because the electricity now comes only for cooling this small uh, blue line. This is almost all of the exergy that could be used for other useful work in the society, like mass transport, metros, trolley buses, trams, lighting, industry. I'm just using for my own cooling. And therefore, I have three components of carbon dioxide emission responsibilities. And that's a long equation, but this is how you should calculate. This is because of the ODI, because of this carbon dioxide responsibility, because I destroy most of the wind energy uh, quality. But I have also some contribution in this blue line because I am replacing grid power, for example, because grid power might be coming from a fossil fuel-based power plant. So when you add the two and start with this, this is my responsibility. Solar concentrating or PV, which one? Well, this is a long story, but uh, as you see, it's not an easy task to do, but let me show these here. The new and carbon dioxide emissions. Let's take a flat plate collector, which is very popular in Turkey. Turkey, I think is the second largest country in the world having solar flat plate collectors, hot water which means 
I am wasting my roof area. Why? Because I could generate electricity. I could still uh, utilize the rest of the hot water in a greenhouse or something. So for flat plate collector, the responsibility in carbon dioxide emissions is minus. For every kilowatt hour of solar energy, I am generating about 0.43 kilogram of carbon dioxide. It's my responsibility. Although I don't have any carbon dioxide, any fossil fuels involved. For PV, which uh, 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 my colleague has mentioned that Turkey has one of the largest PV plants, is marginal because I am not using this time the heat where the PVs in summertime may be hot as 90 degrees Celsius. And this reduces their efficiency. So it's marginal. Let's ignore this small number, so let's say zero. The best, if the climate uh, uh, permits, both electricity and heat, it's the cogeneration, solar cogeneration. And as you see, I am, again, not too much, but on the positive side, in other words, I am really uh, displacing some carbon dioxide, avoiding some carbon dioxide emissions. And because these numbers are never going to be zero, I cannot talk about zero emission solar system. These are the results. Again, even in PVT, I have some voids. I can make it better, 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 but it will have diminishing returns because it will be more costly. It will have more embodiments for manufacturing it, more uh, exotic materials, etc. So this is again another situation in low extra geothermal energy. I am getting, let's say, uh, six megawatts of heat, but I am using two megawatts of electric electricity for the pumps. And then my uh, again, I will have some uh, carbon dioxide emissions. This is another example, even in a flat plate collector, you see if I use pumps, I have to be careful about how much electricity these pumps are uh, demanding because they are demanding a high quality, but I am getting a low quality, let's say 60 degrees Celsius, hot water or even less or sometimes higher. But again, I am responsible for the delta CO2 in terms of or proportion to these white areas. So finally, exergy based good practices. So exergy is not only a game changer, but a game maker. This is a PVT system, wind turbine, and it's exchanging electricity and using the car battery as an electric storage nighttime and also charging daytime, whatever or a hydrogen house where it generates some hydrogen, exchanges with the hydrogen car and uses the hydrogen uh, tank for hydrogen storage. So this is almost zero, but not zero. In a Mediterranean house, a solar brick wall where it generates electricity to a thermoelectric elements, it makes a cooling inside and uses the heat in an adsorption cycle for panel cooling. So these are all possible. But again, never zero ODP, never zero GWP, but the ideal is to minimize these emissions so that the nature can take over again as pre-industrial times to heal the atmosphere by nature. So we have the task of giving the chance of nature to the nature to heal itself. That's what we can do. We cannot go negative carbon to zero carbon, but the nature can do that, not nature, <laughs> unfortunately. So again, in a, a agricultural application, we can have wind turbines, PVT panels, where for the uh, cooling of the PVT panels, I can use the well called water anyway, I am pumping it to the irrigation some hydrogen, heat pumps, energy storage, and greenhouses. This is the latest greenhouse that we have designed. Not in practice yet, but it is uh, almost, again, underlying almost zero carbon with PV panels, a desiccant wheel for humidity control, and also chromatic glasses on one side, 
to reduce the heat gain or permit heat gain in winter, depending upon the outdoor conditions and the season, PV panels, air to air heat exchanger, the ground heat exchanger, air source heat pump, etc., thermal insulation and root zone heating, and even more options with biogas. So when you combine these, the racial exergy management efficiencies you see that mm -hmm. I was talking about goes up to 0 0.95. So little carbon dioxide, but not zero. But it's the best. And the rest, well, if you just plant some more trees here and capture your carbon dioxide from the in indoor air and store it and use it as a refrigerant in your ground, uh, air source heat pump, then you are marginally coming to zero. So for China, the same thing, the same model may be expanded to a hydrogen city. Here we have hydrogen as a storage and wind turbines. But why do we waste this free area of the towers? We can put my PVT, solar PVT here with heat pipes out in the park. So I can get from the same wind turbine pole, wind energy, solar energy, which is also <laughs> all solar anyway. I get power, heat, and with a PCM uh, layer or container, I get thermal energy storage. So we have to think holistically. We have to try to combine everything, including our efforts all along the, let's say, to brick and to the student society and our very uh, eligible high-level colleagues from China. Let's think about all these, not just simple things. This is another nearly zero carbon solar house, which I designed. I can share the uh, details, but what my aim was that there are several opportunities for us to connect countries on the road and belt with energy. Energy means peace, health, prosperity, welfare, a livable earth, clean environment, commerce, which is also another objective of the uh, sustainability. So this has me be a role model and a starting focus for our sustained friendship and collaboration. Let's build them. Thank you so much. And humanity needs to, to rediscover and be peaceful with the nature. This is our message. Then, only then, Exergy will have provided us the solutions. Wisdom and inventions for solutions are indeed endless. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kulkas. Uh, in your speech, uh, we understand uh, the most important point, the, one of the most important point is using energy sustainable and how to use energy better. As I know, uh, wind turbine, some kind of wind turbine has been forbidden in Europe because it can, it may cause uh, another problems in uh, for environment. So uh, we are trying to, uh, yes, maybe we don't produce carbon dioxide, but it may, the system may, cause uh, another problems for environment. So uh, the point uh, I understand uh, how to use energy sustainable uh, in the real life. Uh, so uh, if anyone has a question uh, about his speech, end of the uh, meeting, uh, we, he can answer. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Uh, Dia, uh, you can start and we can keep going. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, maybe I I would like to to confirm some questions because uh, you gave a very uh, uh, excellent talk about uh, what you are doing, and uh, we got some idea. But uh, because we are not very familiar with this area, uh, so uh, it's uh, from my understanding. Maybe you give an overview. Uh, from a large um, uh, uh, view, uh, maybe uh, so to estimate uh, some sustainable or renewable energies 
and to improve the uh, the energy application or the how to avoid the ozone uh, depletion and how to reduce the CO2 uh, emission uh, through such a things. Uh, it, it's quite a very big uh, view, uh, a very big uh, scope uh, from specific technologies such as uh, wind, uh, wind turbine and uh, um, solar energy, solar thermal, solar PV, solar PVT and so on. And also together with building, green building technologies. Uh, and your method seems to be, uh, there's a word I say, is exer exergy smart. Uh, I, I really uh, don't, don't know how to understand the exergy smart. What does it mean? It's uh, by this uh, estimate, and you can improve the exergy uh, or to, 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 to say the, to say the, uh, how to optimize uh, such a, a certain thing because it's a so large uh, area uh, you are touching and including some uh, some general point, for instance, wind power, uh, solar power, and solar uh, water collectors and so on. Uh, so so what is the key point? Uh, could you give, uh, give us yeah. some more clarified? The bottom line is, as I said, energy, all source of energy has a quality, as a source, and ability to do or convert it to transform it to useful applications. And in this respect, for example, if I use natural gas, which has a potential of generating about 87% of the energy qual quantity to useful work in industry, heating, everything, generating electric power, slightly less than electricity. But if I take this potential and just use it in my uh, boiler or uh, furnace, just for heating, like 60 degrees. So it, the natural gas is combusting at about 2,200 degrees. And then I am not using this uh, potential I could use for steam, for industry. I just miss all these opportunities, which means I am mismatching this high quality to a low quality demand. So that's the Xi R index, which is a ratio of what I demand in terms of quality, but I what I provide. If this is a small number, which means I have a large destruction of opportunities because exergy is not stored like energy. You cannot store it. Either you use it or you lose it. <laughs> but yes, losing yes. doesn't stop there. So it's a simple matter. I am not trying to teach exergy in the textbooks. It's something else. I don't like it myself. But it's a simple matter of logic. The logic is I should match the quality of the supply and quality of the demand. If there's a mismatch, let me fill in the gaps with some other applications so that the voids are minimized. This is the whole idea, like in natural gas, or if it's even in solar energy, I have shown, if I just use my roof for just hot water, I am destroying or losing the opportunity of generating my own electricity. So instead I am, getting to the grid and uh, receive electricity from the grid, which means that there's a carbon dioxide over there emission. So it's my responsibility because I could pay a little bit more if, or get some credits, so, uh, support from a bank or whatever, put a PVT. So I could generate from the same roof uh, my own electricity and heat. So that's the idea. It's the allocation problem, the allocation of my resources in allocated fields, solar energy, roof, uh, uh, PV, uh, plant, whatever it is, 
it's an allocation problem on both sides. My resources plus where I can put them, my roof, uh, greenhouse, wherever. So it's a dual allocation problem. And it's a matter of, as I said, uh, uh, simple logic, wisdom. And I have shown, as you noted, some derived equations, maybe, but the main equations, the standard Carnot cycle efficiency. How much temperature goes in, how much goes out. But in wind energy, I have some other simple equations to convert the mechanical energy to an equivalent virtual temperature so that I can uh, map it on an exergy scale. Am I clear? Oh, yes, it's very clear. But, but I, I must, I'm still wondering uh, if uh, what is the method uh, you are doing your such a kind of researches because uh, for uh, this meeting, the purpose of this meeting, a meeting is uh, some communications between your side and my side. And also another purpose is to guide uh, Utku, uh, the students of my master yeah. students, is uh, find a way to find a specific direction for researches because of the pan pandemic or epidemic, he, he, he was blocked yes. at home. Yeah. Uh, he cannot come back to China to, to, to take some uh, experimental work in my laboratories. And so I'm wondering, and your, uh, for, for, uh, for instance, if I put Uku here, Uku is working uh, on this topic. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering, do you have some, some uh, for instance, some uh, simulation method or some calculation method based on thermodynamics, first law, second law, and something, yeah. and um, to uh, to estimate, do some uh, theoretical calculations. Optimize, uh, yeah, from... optimize. Sorry? To optimize the system. Yeah, to optimize. Uh, so all that you can get data from references and then to to to, to optimize, yes, to optimize, uh, to, to find some solutions, optimal solutions, right? So, so exactly. but do you have some uh, program or you can uh, uh, or only calculations through some basic laws or thermodynamic laws? I have uh, several papers, published papers, like uh, just as an example, district heating, solar district heating with prosumers, mm -hmm. solar panels on the roof, and then you share it in a district heating system. Mm -hmm. The length of the district heating system must be not too far because you're pumping uh, exergy, electricity may exceed the heat exergy that you are circulating. Mm -hmm. And there's a formula. And for example, if you just plug in this form in an Excel, Excel sheet, even in its simplest form, you get a two. Let's say you are designing in China or in Turkey a solar district. Uh, community, then you will see what is your maximum length allowable. If you have so many solar panels available, the solar insulation is there. So how much heat are you going to circulate with which type of pump at what diameter? So this is a perfect uh, optimization problem. And for example, this might be a good thesis point just uh, even on an Excel, but it is very important because nobody takes care of that. In Europe, in Holland, I have seen a new project, the Zonnet, the Zonnet project, they claim zero carbon. <laughs> okay, yeah. but they Hi. don't mention what the pumping power is uh, and how much electricity they consume. Even if you generate your own electricity, if you spend it in excessive in your pumping, you are still responsible because that electricity that you generate could be used in somewhere more usefully, but you are wasting it in your pump because the pump is too big. So this is the case and this logic can be applied anywhere. I have maybe 20, 30 cases like air to air heat exchanger for energy savings. Cold air uh, before comes in, uh, winter time is preheated by the exhaust air in an air to air heat exchanger. But 
you are using fence on the suction side and the other side. If you don't pay attention, how much fan power I, you are using to uh, peak your temperature may be negative. Maybe you will be responsible of uh, emitting indirect carbon dioxide because you are using too much electric power to do that job. So you have to redesign your heat exchanger a little bit bigger or uh, better channels, better design. Well, this might mean you have some embodied materials, more cost, but it's a life cycle assessment. So it is life cycle exergy assessment, how much exergy you put and how much exergy you gain, if you gain. So these are actually uh, very important, maybe seemingly simple enough, which is good for a master's or if you just combine them, it can be of course a PhD because these are the areas Unfortunately, nobody cares because of uh, uh, their commercial interest. They don't want to change their heat exchanger <laughs> uh, manufacturing plant. And that's the same thing in ASHRAE. I am a technical committee member in the Society of Heating Ventilating. They don't care. It. They don't want to listen to me. My name is there, it's Exergyman. <laughs> 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 and they say, oh, Exergyman is coming again. So, but <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we have to change this. Uh, yeah. Not with uh, textbooks. Not with textbooks. Yeah, okay. Let, let me say, yeah, is this, this topic is only getting some evaluation, optimization, and some other kind of uh, uh, simulations. And design guides. It, it doesn't do any experimental work or it, it it does not touch any specific technologies or technical solutions, right? Am I right? All of these can be transformed to experiments because for example, in a PVT system, we may take a regular PVT from the market, test it how yeah. much electricity additional I get or total exergy including the hot water, but how much pumping I am spending? Am I on the positive side or negative side? If I change the pump speed with a direct uh, control, depending upon the situation, can I improve the system? Or if I replace the hot water circuit by heat pump, uh, instead of heat pumps, heat pipes, how much extra I get because I am eliminating the pump? So this is a perfect. So it's the, it doesn't mean doesn't mean it also can supply a design for in, for instance uh, engineering design for a whole system for instance when we can design uh, a greenhouse for instance and uh, put different kind of energy together and the locally available and uh, some optimized sure. design right exactly so uh, using these simple tools you can optimize and minimize the emissions responsibility near to zero mm -hmm. by putting even from the shelf, off the shelf elements, PVT, heat pump, but the sizing is also important and the control is important. Then I should stop the heat pump and I should stop the PVT and just let it act only as PV. Maybe the pumping is too much at that situation if the sun is shaded. So the controls and optimum design of a whole system for a building uh, to, of course, save energy. This is actually going to save energy. At the same time, minimize the carbon dioxide by controls and properly designing or sizing even from the off the shelf elements. I don't need to design something new, but which item is the better, which size, which combination, for a given climate, like in a China, in Northern climate is different, Southern is different, Turkey, Mediterranean is different. I have shown a Mediterranean house or something else. But the core is the ability to design, the ability to have some tools to optimize them. The optimization can be a simple trial and error or a very sophisticated multi-objective optimization tool. So each of them is a thesis and experimental. Of course, we have to verify every step by some experiments, that's true. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so network so, is essential. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yes. Uh, so so uh, uh, this topic is more concerning using the computer simulations or uh, also has some experimental work or design or or implement to to really uh, carry yeah. out some designs. The did, starting did you... point will be computer simulation, mm -hmm. simple simulations, logical. Yes. But the next step is bench scale tests, step by step, because the simulation will uh, inevitably have some assumptions. Yeah. We have to refine the boundary conditions and the assumptions by field tests. And also you have to have some hands-on experience that for example, the PVT, I went to the Turkish Standards Institute and I was trying to set up a Turkish standard for PVT, which is not available in the world. Mm -hmm. They test PVT first for PV and then test it for flat plate and they combine. They combine apples and oranges. That's not the case. But a, a technician over there said, Dr. Kilkush, I have a problem. I said, what? You are putting electricity and water together. What happens if the electricity has a spark or leakage? All the electricity will go to the water side. Did you think about the safety? So you see, even at that stage, there are practical problems. They may not be clear enough in the theoretical side. So it is a hand-in-hand -hand situation. Start with theory to refine the design to a certain stage, but further refine it to innovation, of course, needs at different steps, at different scales, experimenters. Without experiments or demonstrations, nobody will believe you. <laughs> you have to have data, data collection also. Let's right, say for right. a season, you'll have this house, put them all together and get the results and see how accurate your predictions were, if they are not equal enough, what's the problem? So it's an iterative process altogether. So experiment is much more important, but the starting point uh, to start with some reasonable designs, you need simulations. Right. First step, minor step. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. I, uh, this is my question. Uh, thank you. Looking forward for cooperation, of course. Yes, right. I also agree. Who will be will be following such a topic and uh, maybe a more specific afterwards. Uh, so please, Uku, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, any yeah. next step? Uh, what is next step? Uh, next step, uh, Professor. Maybe we can uh, hear your research direction and maybe. Uh, Birol Kulkish and other uh, friends can uh, listen to your uh, research direction, electrochrom electrochromic devices uh, okay. in buildings and energy saving in buildings uh, through the windows, uh, which is the one of the uh, essential uh, problem for heat transfer that you have been researching for a long time. Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, maybe maybe uh, I I'm going to uh, to share also my uh, my my PPT uh, if I, I, I but I, I'm sorry I didn't uh, prepare uh, specifically for this meeting uh, but I can share something for maybe let let me first introduce myself and uh, to professor to other Turkish students and also to some other Chinese students and my uh, actually, this uh, the, today is Sunday in China, Sunday also in Turkey. And this morning, I just uh, uh, partic participate, uh, join the uh, uh, organization or a meeting through a meeting uh, that is a, a hydrogen energy meeting. And uh, I, I, I was just uh, selected uh, to a member of hydrogen energy in China and altogether less than 100 members uh, uh, all over China. For the hydrogen hydrogen energy uh, technologies, and um, also I have been working on solar energy for a long time, uh, more than ten years. Uh, that is uh, including PV, uh, including uh, PVT, including solar thermal uh, 
uh, technologies. Uh, but we have been working more on solar technology technologies uh, because I was uh, I were working uh, in in physics department, not in thermal energy energy engineering department. Uh, uh, but now the situation has been changed. I have been working on physics part uh, in the condensed matter physics for for more than twenty years. Uh, but two years ago. Uh, three years ago, exactly, I, I, I transferred myself into a, 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 another engineering uh, uh, department, uh, which is called Energy and uh, Power Engineering School in Beihan University. And uh, recently, I'm, I'm leading a group uh, as a dean of the Department of Energy Engineering, uh, which we have just set up. Uh, several directions, and we have uh, maybe uh, summarized uh, orally um, uh, about our our department working. Uh, so overall, I, I I have maybe for future collaborations we can find more opportunities to do the so. And in our department, uh, that is energy department, uh, energy engineering engineering department, and we have just a. Uh, 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 draw a um, roadmap for, for, for future uh, researches. And that is, uh, we have three aspects or three directions, big directions. And why is uh, we have, we are going to develop some uh, low emission uh, gas turbines, uh, which can be used for the uh, power generation and so on. And mainly focus on the uh, hydrogen gas uh, fuels and the very low emissions. That is also can be, can be put into consideration as a professor's uh, estimation or opt optimizations. So this is one of the big uh, first directions uh, in, my, uh, in my department newly. And uh, the second one is renewable energies, uh, second big topic. Uh, but renewable energy is uh, including many things like the professor has been introduced, uh, uh, has uh, introduced uh, like, uh, like uh, solar energy, wind energy, geothermal, uh, and uh, even some uh, biomass and so on. In my department, we have been, we are going to focus three part, solar energy, uh, wind turbine, and uh, gas turbine, uh, no, sorry gas, uh, uh, biomass, biomass uh, energy. So I, I, I am responsible for the solar energy part. So this is one thing. And uh, so this is the second part, so second part including three, uh, uh, three uh, directions, solar, wind, biomass. And the third part is, uh, uh, is energy, energy storage. And just recently, last year, uh, I was uh, the, the, the uh, was responsible to to apply for the new uh, discipline for the energy storage part, and for the energy storage part, we are also have set up several directions, including uh, hydrogen storage, uh, heat and cooling storage, and uh, using the phase transition uh, materials, and uh, and uh, uh, high pressure gas. Uh, uh, gas, uh, uh, mechanical energy storage, and so on. So, so this is uh, the, the the overview of my department, uh, which is uh, now I'm dean of this department. Uh, there are altogether uh, less than ten people working together in this uh, new newly set up uh, department. So, so hopefully in the, in the future with uh, with uh, Turkish uh, colleagues. Maybe we can set up some, find some more opportunities to 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 get a mutual uh, communication, mutual meeting, and mutual collaboration uh, based on some our uh, Belt and Road Initiative uh, project. So this is, and my personal uh, uh, research is uh, actually in the, in the past twenty years, uh, roughly, because my physics background and. Uh, I, I'm mainly working on the some material science, uh, which is uh, more uh, close related to solar energy 
applications and uh, as well as the energy, green energy, uh, energy savings. Uh, so this is actually the, the, the PPT uh, a couple of years ago I, 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 I gave ever in, in the University of uh, Worcester uh, in, in, in UK in, in, in North Ireland. So I, 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 I put a title of my, my presentation is a 3S plus. So uh, what does it mean? It's a uh, 3S means solar spectra selective. Uh, that is 3S. So, so because we are concentrating our uh, researches on the technical or more fundamental uh, researches on the solar. Uh, so that is uh, because we need to know what is the solar energy. So the solar energy, solar energy based on the spectra, light spectra or electromagnetic magnetic spectra, and then made this spectra uh, wavelength selective. This is three S. So that means that, uh, we can we developed and we 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 have we have researches on the solar thermal, solar absorbing coatings for solar uh, water heaters and the CSP as well, like uh, Professor has mentioned. And uh, the second one we are we have been working on the low emissivity thin films. Which has been used in the in the uh, high energy efficiency windows or energy efficiency windows, and um, in the recent ten years, uh, we have been developing the more advanced uh, mount layer or thin film uh, devices, also for smart windows and uh, electro we, we we call it electrochromic uh, mount layer devices, smart windows. And also recently, because uh, I, I transferred from physics background for physics department to the energy engineering part department, and we are uh, works, uh, we, we, we are we are starting to 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 work more and more on the in engineering part, uh, not only uh, for the very basic uh, fundamental researches like a, like a professor you are doing uh, in the in the more uh, simulation. Uh, through through exertion, maybe I, 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 I'm going to become an, a, another exertion man in, in China, like you <laughs> in the future. Okay, so so we are also doing some vacuum glasses, uh, like uh, also using for 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 more insulations. Uh, I, I'm I'm very briefly introduce my researches uh, uh, as quick as possible. Uh, this is solar energy. So because uh, when we talk about solar energy, the solar energy come into the earth with uh, 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 through the, the light, light uh, uh, electrochromic, uh, electromagnetic uh, waves. So uh, ultraviolet occupied, uh, uh, concerning about the energy part, so about 7% of ultraviolet occupy the, the, the whole energy part of solar. Visible light uh, occupies some uh, 40, uh, 45%. Of visible light, and uh, also almost a half, almost the forty percent, a near infrared part of of this uh, occupied solar energy, the total solar energy. So this is a this is the structure of uh, of solar energy coming onto the surface of the Earth. So this is the very physics understanding of solar energies, and uh, that that is not very enough because in the low temperatures we need to concern about a further. Uh, the longer uh, infrared uh, part. So, so uh, for instance, uh, in room temperature, the peak uh, uh, radiation through uh, Planck's uh, black body radiation, uh, that is located at and, and 10 microns, and 100 is a little bit lower, and 200, 300. But most of those temperature black body or or, 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 or ordinary uh, objects will be radiated through such a longer uh, infrared radiations and including loss of heat and loss of thermal and so on. So uh, this is still solar energy, this part, the below uh, 2.5 uh, microns. So this image gave us a very clear physics image and let us to make some designs and also make some designs for the mount layers of for some coatings or thin films to be spectral selective, selective. 
So this is give us some uh, some ideas. So we can we can we can design some solar spectra selective or three S films and coatings or coatings for their applications. So typically three types, and one is transparent coating coatings or films for energy efficiency windows of green buildings, also buildings integrated PV and so BIPV also can be. That's very close to the Professor Yoss. Uh, researches, but we are focused on more uh, technical works. So uh, that include low emissivity, uh, transparent conductive thin films, uh, electro, uh, electrochromic uh, transparent multi-layer devices and thermal uh, chromic uh, devices uh, films. And for absorbing solar spectroselectric coatings for thermal conversion and solar uh, catalyst hydrogen productions, and we can uh, we can develop the solar thermal absorbing coatings and uh, the catalyst films such, such as uh, tungsten oxide uh, and titanium oxide and, and something. So, so also uh, solar spectra uh, selective reflecting coatings for buildings, satellite surfaces and space correct surfaces for temperature controlling systems. And we have been developing some uh, monochromic chromic reflecting coatings and uh, electrochromic uh, reflecting devices for smart controlling and so on. Uh, so this is the window uh, controlling uh, because the glasses, you see well, for ordinary glasses, this is transparent for, for the spectrum from UV light, this is the yellow one for, for, for the ordinary glasses uh, until six microns, uh, it can be transparent. And for some uh, kind of glasses and for ordinary, low E glasses, low emissivity glasses. It can control such, such a thing, only let the, infra, uh, the, 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 the visible light transparent and uh, some part of near infrared part uh, is transparent, uh, and, uh, but, but can cut the long infrared. So if this is the one type of the, uh, of the energy, energy insulating for the, for the radiation part. And uh, for more uh, advanced uh, low E films uh, using the nano, uh, nano micro layer silvers and so on. So this is a spectrally uh, selecting glasses and uh, make the transparent more selectively and more like a filters to only let the visible light transparent and uh, cut all the uh, UV light are uh, ultraviolet and cut all the uh, infrared part from the sunshine, from sunshine. Uh, that, that is make the windows more energy saving, like a car windows, like a building windows. So let the, the, the near infrared part uh, to, be, uh, to be rejected, to be rejected. And so this is what we have made I, for my early laboratories. This is using uh, titanium oxide uh, and uh, silver uh, titanium oxide. This is a simplest uh, design for the nano nano uh, for the nano uh, multi layers. And uh, so, so you say the at uh, at uh, 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 the visible light, it, it has a very high uh, trans transmittance, and uh, even even can get 90 percent. And but for near infrared, it completely blocked. Uh, so this can be uh, more optimized and use it, uh, make this transmittance more narrow and focus on the, on the, on the visible light and let all other uh, wavelengths uh, totally blocked, total blocked. So this is a completely, but this is the one thing. Another thing is for absorbing uh, coatings it's also designed by multi layers, by, by, by some physical method, by, by, by vacuum coating, by ma ma vacuum sputtering. And, and uh, so you say here is a glass substrate, and here is a, actually this is a solar heater working principles, and we have been working on and uh, using a substrate and making uh, multi layer uh, infrared reflectors and same match and uh, with a, with a high metal. Uh, uh, contents and low metal contents and anti-reflective. So th this is the this is the optical designs. 
So make the line, this is the blue line and the, the figure of blue line. Here is still the solar sunshine radiation part. So, uh, and uh, here's a blue line is uh, experimental result of these layers of uh, this uh, coatings reflectance. So reflectance here. And uh, so you say uh, within the total region of this uh, solar region, and it is uh, uh, the, the reflectance almost zero. That means uh, the, the absorptance is very high. As absorptance can be as high as uh, you see here is 90, 97%. Uh, but in far infrared, it's uh, reflectance is very high. And so this is actually the very good uh, spectrally select, solar spectrally selective uh, coatings. And uh, here is the reflectance is very high, means the, the emittance is very low. You say the emittance is 0 0.03, that means the, the, the thermal loss is, has been controlled as low as possible as low as possible. So this is something like the, the, the three S absorbing coatings. And these coatings have been used in the water heaters, uh, water heaters uh, and the, such as such a, uh, a vacuum double, double layer glasses and the coatings is, has been coated in the inner glasses tubes. And then the outer glasses has been double layered with vacuum inside with a very good thermal insulation. Here's a cold water, hot water circulating and so on. It's a uh, uh, very, and here's a, uh, uh, this one has been used in China, very, very uh, uh, popular. And this is a uh, more more often used in, in, in South Europe, but maybe in, in Turkey, it's uh, such a such a technology. It's a flat plate uh, collectors. Uh, so, so different technologies, because here you say the, this is a plate, uh, this is a flat, uh, uh, Coating uh, collectors, uh, but the top coating technology is say is is a multi layer, it's a very thin multi layers, and transfer transfer sunshine into heat. So that is the principle is same, uh, but structure is not same. And this is the, uh, the both of these uh, structures have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so this is, the, and there's another type. So there's all together in the world three types and uh, double layered vacuum glasses and flat uh, glasses, but without vacuum insulations. And this is the vacuum tubes uh, together with some heat pipe. Here in central is a heat pipe, which is a, has a very, very good connectivities. as uh, so much higher than copper, silver, and so on. So together, and then using some uh, heat exchanger and uh, to put the sunshine as uh, heat, I transfer into into some water and some other kind of fluid uh, into tanks and so on. Uh, that is uh, for ordinary temperature applications. And uh, so uh, I have been also working on some high temperature uh, application. This is a more uh, engineering, more bigger engineering for power power plants. Uh, so here is uh, some some uh, uh, solar fields. Uh, photo uh, from America, I think that here is in Nevada uh, desert. And I have been, uh, I, I say the professor also has such a same, uh, same, same uh, yeah. uh, photograph, maybe, okay. And uh, uh, what we are, we, we, together with a company in China, we have set up such a demonstration, uh, a portable uh, engineering part, uh, supply some very hot uh, water. Uh, high prior uh, water fields. And what we are working in my laboratory together with the company is to fabricate, to, to coat in such a tube, a very high temperature tubes for the solar spectra absorbing coatings. Uh, that is, can, can stand, uh, can exist, uh, resist a high temperature as high as 500 degrees. Uh, so, so for this tubes, this is for collective using the parabolic uh, trough collectors to focus on these tubes can get uh, more than 400 degrees and so on. So which, and some other things, I, this is not, not my, my work, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't touch too much. So this actually, I, my, my personal uh, background is making some coatings and fabricate some facilities or equipment, very big equipment 
to, to make such coatings, make such coatings. This is sputtering machines. Using vacuum, you say, here's a many vacuum bound, and here is a chamber, a very big chamber. Here, the chamber, vacuum chamber from here to here is a six meter elongs, and diameter of this is about um, uh, two point something in meters for the, uh, and that is, that, that is for production. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, constructed by a company uh, collaborated with me in, in, in China. And this is also a collaboration with uh, for for the for the for the electrochromic devices uh, with a pretty big size. Uh, this is uh, haven't been commercially used in China, but America has been used. So you see, here is a glass as a, as a size is uh, forty centimeters, forty centimeters. So at the very beginning, you say that transmittance is very very low, so only about one percent for the whole. Uh, solar energy spectrum, uh, including visible light, including near infrared, including uh, visible uh, ultraviolet. But uh, when you put some voltage, you, know, you see here is here is electrode, here is another electrode, and that completely transparent. And the trans transmittance at this moment is uh, more than seventy percent. So so this is we call a smart window. A smart window can be applied to adjust the transmittance automatically or smartly as we need, as we demand, and then can, can control the, 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 the how, how much gains from sunshine, how, how, how much can come into the room, how much can be blocked and as, as you like. So can be can be used in the in the in the buildings or cars or trains and so on. So so here is uh, the and uh, so the, 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 the property of this uh, glass is, is something like this. At the transparent state, you say here's the blue, the, the, the green part. So the highest is can be uh, almost 70 percent, uh, 90%. But as time goes on, when we put, put a voltage to control this, it can be very, very dark. And uh, you say in the near, near infrared, it's almost very, very, it, it's not. Uh, not transparent anymore. So if you compare this spectra, this is a solar spectrum. The so solar spectra, as I just uh, at the beginning showed, if you overlap these two uh, spectras, and you can say it's, it's, it's exactly this electrochromic uh, devices can adjust very, very accurately on each part of the ultraviolet, visible light, near infrared and even the long infrared part. So if you compare this, so uh, more quantitatively in the visible light and uh, the, for, from 75% and, until even more, well, can be, can be less than less than 5% uh, can be adjusted uh, continuously. And for the near infrared part for the, for the sunshine, for the sunshine, and at the beginning is uh, half, uh, 40%, near infrared transmittance and uh, when it becomes dark, only zero can be transparent. Therefore in summer, and when you have such a glass and you can easily control the heat from sunshine not come into the room. So this is the advantage of, of this. So this is a very excellent energy efficiency smart windows as we, we call. So electrochromic devices can be adjusted uh, can, can, can adjust not only transmittance, but also it can be uh, applied into solar spectra selective transmittance, reflectance, absorptance, emissivity, and so on. So that therefore it is a very good device or technologies to be used to smartly uh, controlling those kind of uh, electromagnetic uh, wave properties. Uh, properties. Uh, so this is uh, also we have been developed for the satellite surfaces controlling. So by the flexible substrate, you say uh, using the PI substrate and uh, make a layer by layer coatings. And you say the color may be changing, uh, not, not so, up, up, okay, you can say this is color trending uh, using cell phone maybe. And the voltage is very small, it's using 1.7 uh, volt to drive such devices. And uh, so, uh, so this is something like a, 
And this is a device, a small device made by my students at the laboratories and uh, using glass, small glass, and then using battery to drive such a color changing uh, trans transparent and uh, not transparent. You say, here's a glass, the structure is glass ITO uh, layer, uh, nickel oxide layer, and lithium, uh, some, some layers, and this is the electrolyte layer, tungsten oxide layers, ITO again. So something very, very simple, but, but the coating technologies are using the uh, vacuum coating technologies, uh, which we have been developing by, by ourselves. We are even developing such a coating technology, uh, tech, uh, not only technology, but, but also equipment equipment ourselves. Okay, so, so this is also for the infrared, the far infrared, this is the image. You see, this is the image we have been uh, developing using for the satellite surface controlling, because on satellite, uh, there's no uh, convection, no conductivity anymore, uh, totally isolated in vacuum in the space. So the only controlling of temperature through the radiation itself, you also need to reflect or something like uh, uh, the sunshine gains or sunshine the loss, something. You say the temperature doesn't change, but the image is changing. So that is when we put some, some the color changing, this is the, that means the far infrared, uh, absorptance or the em emittance has been changed. Therefore, at, a, at the beginning you say there, it, 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 it is very, very, very dark. Uh, so something like at the beginning, this is the beginning. This is a very, so you say, uh, uh, when you change the decoloring and decoloring, uh, it, it is becoming, you say, it's uh, seems to be cooler, seems to be cooler, but actually the temperature is still not, uh, it is still same. It's room temperature, but the, the the emissivity has been has been changed. So you say it is very very clear using the the, the infrared uh, images. This is what we have have. Uh, so this is same 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 thing like uh, like this. Okay. So and uh, for vacuum glasses, uh, there are not only vacuum glasses recently, and uh, in China there are several companies. Uh, I have been working together so also because uh, because uh, if you and now uh, there are many uh, maybe I show another uh, report uh, let's say uh, yeah so because uh, talking about Windows and we have uh, in 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 history there are many uh, single glass single uh, single layer glass windows single and then uh, now the most popular is a double layered with one chamber inside and maybe put some inert uh, gases and to, to be more, uh, to reduce the convection of the gases of fluid. And then uh, so, so, so uh, too. And also the low emissivity by coatings, here's a silver and some multiple layers put on the glasses and then to, 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 to reflect the sunshines uh, near infrared and so on. So to, to save the energy, this already have been uh, obligatory used in, in Europe, in North Europe, for instance, Germany and the Swedish, uh, Norway and uh, American Canada and so on. So new buildings has been forbid, has been forced to use, accept such a energy, uh, low emissivity glasses. And in China, the productivity is very high. And uh, so this is all to, 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 to be used to develop something, uh, but still not enough. So in order to, to, to make the, the windows more efficiency or more energy saving, or more thermal, thermal insulating. Uh, so now there's a triple uh, glass with two chambers has been developed, uh, has been developed uh, also uh, with some low, E low emissivity coatings on glasses, uh, so it can be can be can be can be you know, very very uh, energy saving for them. But the problem of this kind of windows is very heavy, so because there are uh, three layers, I mean each uh, uh, each layer of glass is five uh, five meters in th thickness, 
and uh, space. So it's become very heavy. Therefore, people develop uh, some other type of things. So one is uh, we call uh, is there Vacuum any gas? Glass. Is there any gas between glasses, professor, like argon or aurigel? Here, uh, here, yes, yes. Here, there is. There are some gas inside, but and the new development is a vacuum. Vacuum without any gas. So vacuum is is a low pressure. It's low pressure and like a like a duma bottle. It's a, it's a double layer. So without any convections or without any fluid, without any gas between these double layers. But the problem is for the flat glasses is because of high pressure outside the gas atmosphere. Uh, so if there's only two glasses, it will be put together, pressed together. Therefore, there must be some small pillars support to separate those kind of. Therefore, every, every several centimeters so now six centimeters maximum centimeters, every six centimeters, there must be very small pillar to separate, support these two, two glasses, separate each other. And distance of these two glasses is very small, less than one millimeter. And so the pillar is, the length of the pillar is smaller than one millimeter and the diameter of the pillars is only 0 0.2 millimeters. Therefore, for such a vacuum glasses, the U value, we call it U value or conductivity, thermal conductivity is less than 1.0 uh, watt per square meter uh, per Kelvin. So, so, so less. So, so sometimes the, 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 the minimum can, can be 0 0.5 or something. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very energy efficient. But the problem is also is, is, is very difficult to be uh, processing, to be fabricated uh, according to the very easily because it must be uh, originated from a vacuum uh, from from factories fabricating, not like glass, you can cut as as you like. So here, if you if you cut it, it is completely broken. So so therefore, people are developing such a things. So using using more, uh, the idea is something like uh, the double the, the the triple glasses layers with several chambers. But here, because the, in the middle, and the people using the thin films. Which is not very heavy, and to separate such a bigger space, and then make the several spaces. And here, uh, here is glass, glass, film, film, and you can have more. And on the films, you can put some low emissivity uh, uh, film, thin films, and they, they are all. And all the films, the maximum is uh, about uh, 100 micron thickness, or even uh, 50, 50 micron thicknesses. And then the space can be can be one, two, three, or even four. So the total thickness is almost the same as the double layer uh, glasses, windows. So, but the insulation of thermal conductivity can be reduced only half or even one third of the traditional one. So this is one interesting uh, technologies we have been uh, working and we are going to work it. Uh, so so this is something like a uh, and you say uh, here is uh, here is a typical uh, typical uh, uh, image and this is this is the ideal so here is a uh, visible light here's a, uh, uh, ultraviolet near infrared and our our low emissivity coatings should be functionalized like uh, here in this visible light is very high transmittance and all other part will be cut off, will be cut off. Uh, but also in the southern part uh, of China, northern part, uh, we have some different designs as well. So in Turkey, in Mediterranean part, maybe we can have some different things. And uh, actually in the past, in my laboratories, most of the equipment we have done in, uh, for, for, for experiment is, is vacuum sparkling machines. And which we are designing, fabricating ourselves. 
Uh, but in the future, we are also working with some proteins or even some uh, more uh, general or more complex or complicated systems or general uh, or engineering uh, designs like uh, Professor Yu are doing in Turkey and uh, doing some simulation, optimization, uh, estimation, evaluation of how energy uh, can be more usefully obtained or usefully used uh, to, to, to reduce the waste of energy to improve the uh, more uh, environmental work in uh, specifically ozone uh, depletion part. So this is uh, our, uh, our things. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, this is my, my very brief introduction. Uh, probably can, can, can give you some hint. Maybe we can find some uh, common interest in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Professor Zhengyang, and uh, very interesting and very impressive laboratories you have. Thank you, thank you. And this means that uh, your uh, experimental side, your experience and opportunities may be coupled with our uh, theoretical side, modeling side, simulation side, and optimization side for uh, coupled very good applications. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm also thinking about what we can share, we can do some uh, complementary work. So, oh. so using your uh, simulations and uh, our experimental experience, uh, we can find some, some, some joint topic, a very interesting topic. And uh, combined with our local things, for instance, Turkish uh, climate and uh, and so on and so 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 different kind of things we can uh, we can share and uh, I hope to put Wuku working on some to find some joint joint interest uh, topic and uh, maybe continue if possible I can uh, transfer him into PhD students in future and then continue to do some. Uh, very helpful, useful work. So, so. I am looking forward for our cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, both of uh, you. Uh, first, uh, we don't have many time because uh, time is up. Uh, I think uh, our friends uh, did not ask any question, uh, but in the future, uh, I have. Uh, your con uh, your contact and if we have any plan for future uh, we can arrange a new meeting or conference for future uh, is it possible yes uh, to finish to finish the uh, meeting? in the meantime uh, however i would also prefer to communicate with emails from time to time to find out uh, collaborative research topics yes to yes. prepare them to the next meeting in other words the next meeting should be dedicated to discuss these potential joint research projects okay so i would like to communicate with all of you with the professor and see the best uh, selection of uh, joint and useful useful to the humanity <laughs> projects uh, very, very good suggestions. I, I completely agree. So if Utko shares our emails with you and myself and others, we may have some emails yeah, together. Yeah, I put uh, on the message. I leave on the message yeah. here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. All Thank right. you very much. Do you have mine? I will also give mine. No, I, I haven't. Uh, I, I, yeah, please uh, give, give, give me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also writing. Maybe write a, write, write a message. Leave a message to me.
Thank you. I have noted your email. Okay, I also sent, sent you a message. Uh, this is a video. I, I sent an empty message to you already, okay? The hard email. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it will take some time to arrive. Uh, because they are using the okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, Mr. Dia, uh, end of the meeting, I would like to thank for arranging this meeting. Mustafa uh, has been doing master in Li Gong Da Shi. Uh you're, you're really welcome, welcome to, to, to Beihan University to, 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 to have a party, to have a meeting, to have any, any kind of things. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Roger. Birol Hocam, çok teşekkür ederiz katıldığınız için. Biz teşekkür ederiz. Kolay gelsin. Ben de mutlu. katkısıyla ortak projeler yapacağız umarım. Kolay evet. gelsin. Evet, kesinlikle. Ben de aynı şekilde ben aynı alanda çalışıyorum ederim. Pekin Teknoloji Enstitüsü'nde. Türkiye Öğrenci Birliği'ni bunun için kurduk hocam. Birlikte işler yapmaya hazırız. Teşekkür ederim. Şey şey var. Hadi. Beklerim. Kolay gelsin. Okay. See you professor. See you. Keep in okay. touch. Bye. Okay. Now we finish.